Hello, and welcome back to the Bot Spot. Today, we're going to continue our series on useful Christianity with self-control. The text of this series covers not only our spiritual states, but our physical as well. As well it should, because in Christianity, both are important. It is through our character and reputation that we have opportunity to speak to our friends, family, and those around us. It is through our spiritual knowledge and faith that we know enough and care enough to do so. As Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 32 reads, He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. If we lack self-control, we often put ourselves in unnecessary hardship. And for what benefit? Of course, self-control is easier said than done. James chapter 3 verses 7 through 10 read, For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men, who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. This is a good analog for our lives. How could we possibly hope to reach others if we're living lives of hypocrisy and contradiction? Paul tells Titus, after telling him about the relationships of Christians in the church, mentions this in chapter 2 verses 11 through 12. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Self-control is quite difficult to learn, especially if you're starting later in life, but by continuing to make the right choices, no matter how hard they are, doing the right thing becomes easier and easier. We must focus directly on our faith and do what helps us grow as Christians, or the cares of the world can choke up our faith, as in the parable of the sower, or as another example, Romans 13 verses 11 through 14 read, and do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand, therefore let us cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly, as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the fat, flesh to fulfill its lust. To put on the Lord Jesus Christ is a decision that must be made daily, and like making good choices, becomes easier the more you do so. Being a good example is something we should strive for regardless of our age, and the best way to have self-control is to consider those of the faith, and even those of the world, who watch us. We must be vigilant and ask ourselves, if someone saw me doing this right now, what would they think? Or, as Paul put it in 1 Timothy 4, 12-13, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Age is no excuse for lack of growth in any aspect of our lives, either by being too old or not old enough. The excuses we use may fool those around us, but they won't fool God. He knows what we can handle and will not put us in a situation we can't handle, although we can put ourselves in situations that seem impossible to get out of without giving in. Thank you very much for your attention.